What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec, and this video is going to be about taking that data that we would normally upload into Bloodhound to find a complex Active Directory attack path, and instead just press it with JQ so we can think like a list instead of the graph, which allows us to find some basic attack paths. For example, with a list, we can just dump all enabled users and then do a password spray. Or even better, we can dump all enabled users with a password set time more recently than the last login, which may indicate the help desk or someone changed the passwords and do a password spray against those users. Additionally, we could just look at all the computers that have been powered on within the last years, because maybe when we did our Nessus scan, a computer was powered off. This helps us find it. So with all that being said, let's just jump in and get to the parsing. Now, before we get into any of the fun command line parsing stuff, I do want to just go over the data visually as it's intended with Bloodhound. We can just click around and kind of see um, what Bloodhound shows us. So we click find all domain admins and we can see we have two here. And this is just the data from the search machine on Hack the Box. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be enough to show it. So we could search around a lot of things. So if we do like shortest path to unconstrained delegation systems, we have this beautiful graph. And this is what Bloodhound is good at showing. It's good at showing exact attack paths. But there are attack paths that it's just not good at showing because it's hard to visualize it uh, visually. And if you want to do like a password spray across all enabled users, you could run a custom cipher query like um, let's match um, users where it's enabled. So if we do this and return true, this should return a list of all users. Let's see, where n dot, did I do that right? Enabled, oh, not return true, return n. We're returning what the match is, right? And this is gonna return a list of all the users. And we can see which ones we compromise, marked as high value, things like that. But it's hard to get all these names in a text file from Bloodhound. We could like enable this so we see all the names and kind of just type them out, but it's not that easy. There's also a lot of really good information in this, like last login, last login replicated, enabled if it's compromised, a lot of good information like AS rep roastable. So um, it looks like there's extra properties, things like that. But it's hard to look at all this information in a visual form. And if you want to learn more about writing Cypher queries, um, there is a Hack the Box Academy module that goes into it. If you don't want to pay any money, you can try turning on this debug mode. And when you turn on the debug mode, whenever you run a query, it's going to output that on the bottom. So if we do like show um, shortest paths from Kerberostable users, no data returned, let's see. Let's just find all domain admins. And it puts the query down here. So if you want to learn that, you can potentially do it this way. Right here, we're just matching end user where has SPN service principal name is true. And there's two here. But this isn't a video on Cypher queries. It's a video on parsing this command line stuff. So if we look at the data from Bloodhound, this is just the Bloodhound Python ingester. Let's start with users because users are what's most um, noticeable. If we just cat this file, it's a huge JSON blob. If we do jq dot, we can kind of see the information, but we kind of just get flooded with information. It's hard to visualize everything, right? I know a lot of people that like do this and then grep for name, and I used to be guilty of this, like doing this and um, let's see, maybe if we put a single quote here, and then we get a list of all the users. However, when we do this, we can't really like chain this command. So like users here could be disabled and we don't know it because we use grep and just threw away a lot of the data. So if we actually learn how to use JQ and parse it properly, we can do fun queries to make it like a database and just show us the information we want. So I'm gonna go back to this JQ dot and um, JQ can parse files. I just like piping it after cat because then, whoops. Oh God, I just erased burp. Well, erased it from the tray, but that's fine. Um, I like doing this because it puts my query at the end of my syntax. And the really weird thing about JQ is it uses the pipe character a lot. So I put everything in quotes. So um, my command line doesn't interpret that. But if I just do this JQ dot, we have two values here. We have meta, and then if we look at the top, 
we have data and we can view that by doing jq dot and piping that over to keys and it shows us those two keys um, we don't really care about meta meta is just telling us its users how many there are what version of the ingester we used i believe so i'm just going to do dot data and now we're only in that data group and the issue here is we're in a list we can see that by that um, like square bracket so if I just do open close, we're going to go into that list. And now we're in the heart of the user data. And the only thing I really care about is going to be stuff out of properties. I don't care about this whole ACES thing, things like that. Everything I want is in properties. So I'm also going to do dot properties to go in here. And then we can do a pipe. And let's see, what is a good way to do this visually? I'm going to probably, let's see. Um, hold on. I'm trying to think of how to best visually display this data. So for this demo, I think I'm going to use a lot of escapes. There we go. Then we can do jq.properties like this. And when I do it again, oh, it's not going to visually show the escape. Oh, well. Um, so I want to just show all names. So I'm going to pipe this to dot name. And that name was a variable here, right? It's this one. So now we have just dumped a list of all the names. Now, if I wanted to just show enabled, we can go back to properties. We see there is a enabled flag. And we can pipe this and use a select. And we can say um, dot enabled is equal to true. And then we pipe out the name, and we have a list of every account, right? We can also do equals false, and here's the disabled account. So right away, we can see the value of doing this instead of using grep. Now, the other thing we could do is show things like descriptions, right? So we can do name. Let's see. Can I do... What if I... Hold on. So I do this. I wonder if this will go over multi-lines. So let's see, JQ, like that. No, I'm having trouble getting multi-lines, oh well. Um, ignore that. So we got this name, and I'm gonna do plus, then a quote, then a plus, and I'm gonna do dot description. So now we have a list of the names and descriptions for all disabled accounts because enabled is set to false. I can set that over to true. And now we have descriptions for accounts. And this is handy because every now and then you see descriptions that are useful. Maybe it contains a password. It contains some type of information, right? I don't see it that often, but it's the go-to for like CTFs and things and beginners to AD exploitation. Now, if I look at an account that doesn't have a description, this one does. Um, let's see, this description is set to null. So if I want to just show all accounts with descriptions, we can go back over to where this select is and say select dot, uh, we got to do a parenthesis dot description. I type of that description and then is not equal to null. And now we're only listing all 80 accounts and their descriptions. Um, we could change this to like a colon, so it's a bit more friendly if we wanted to. I think a tab would also work if we do backslash T. Uh, no, tab does not. I wonder if backslash backslash. Nope. I'm sure there's a way to do tab delimitation, but I don't know. But we can see this, right? And this is helpful. We see like web service is a temporary account created by the help desk. Another good one to do that I like using, if we go back to where just JQ and look at all properties. Um, there's this whole last login, last login timestamp, and also, let's see, last login and password last set, right? PWD, oh, it's right below it. So these timestamps are a bit confusing. Um, in like Windows early days, the last logon wasn't replicated between all domain controllers. So this is all the logins for this domain controller. And most organizations have multiple domain controllers. You normally have one per building to speed up things. So you can't really depend on this last logon timestamp because it's just whatever domain controller you're querying. 
So they introduced last logon timestamp, <laughs> which has a timestamp. I realize I said last logon timestamp, but there's actually a variable last logon timestamp, and this one is replicated. I think it's only replicated every one to two weeks, so this can still be out of date. However, it's a much more accurate way when dealing with Bloodhound data. Um, in Bloodhound, that one is actually last log on. You can see it twice, and it's quote unquote replicated. But in this demo, this probably not gonna be that good because a lot of these accounts were created automatically. So if I get rid of this description, we say last log on timestamp. Uh, oh, here's a good one. So it's trying to add a string to a number because this is an integer value. In order to do integers, we put the last log in timestamp in parentheses, pipe it over to string like that, and here we have it. So all these are because um, the data is the account's never been logged into. If I look at last login like this, it's zero. So zero, negative one for that, but um, it just means the account hasn't been logged in. Uh, and when you see this, typically I try weak passwords or maybe it's a honeypot. Um, weak passwords because it means the account's never been logged in, so maybe it's one that the help desk freshly created. Um, and that becomes handy to then target things. So you may want to mark like, um, like do starting points, like search for these users and then right click and try to do a shortest path from that user or something. Um, the other thing we could do with this, with these queries, let's get rid of this description is equal to null. And there are two fields. We have um, last logon timestamp and password last set. So I'm going to grab password last set and say when that is greater than the last log on timestamp, then display it. And we have to, let's see, we screwed something up. Oh, I don't have a period before this. And the command I pasted from did not convert this to string. There we go. So now this is showing all the accounts that have a password last set greater than the last logon. And these would be accounts that are probably good for a password spray because this means the help desk reset the password and the user has not logged in yet. Again, we're seeing a lot of data here because this is a demo environment, but you should kind of get the picture. Um, the other thing there is, let's see, in this box, there is a Kerberostable user, um, the Web SVC. And if we look at the Web SVC user, let's see, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to show it. I'm probably just gonna do dot properties and search for it, right? Um, Web SVC. We could see it has a service principal name. So if for some reason we didn't wanna go in Bloodhound, we could just search for this, right? Um, if we look at service principal name for something else, it's just open and close. So if we do this search and say um, dot select dot service principal name is not equal to open and close, and then do dot name, Let's see, I don't think I closed my select statement. See, what is this saying? Unexpected end. Oh, I have a period select. It's just select. And that did not work. Let's see. Did I type a service principal name? It's names with an S, right? So let's add that S. And then we have all the curb roastable accounts. KBTGT, you're never going to curb roast. But this is a good way to get started with just parsing the Bloodhound data. And really, I can't stress enough trying to run like the password last set query I did on your actual domains to find accounts. But another good one to do is going into the computers. So if I cat 2022 computers.json, pipe it over to JQ, we see it's pretty much the same exact thing. So I'm gonna do dot data, pipe it like that. And then we can do dot properties and see properties of computers. 
And one of the key ones is operating system. So with this, we can easily just show me all the operating systems. So I can do uh, dot name. I did a single quote there, dot name, and then plus, we can separate with colon, dot operating system, like this. Uh, let's see, did I type of this? Oh, I don't have a plus. And we see a list of all the computers and their operating system. A lot of these are null because again, it is a lab. So we can also say, um, let's see, select dot operating system is not null, like this. And now we have a list of the two computers. We could also do something like, um, let's say there's a lot of Windows 10 Pros and we just want to find like Windows, like non-Windows 10 Pros and eventually filter out the things that have a lot of and find like Windows XP, right? So we could do another select here and say dot operating system is not Windows 10 Pro. And of course, I forgot to close the parentheses. And then we have just the one. Now, another common thing I like doing, like just like usernames, if we look at the properties of a computer, there is this last login timestamp. We also have password last set. So there's a lot of timestamps here. Um, if you didn't know, every machine in Active Directory is also an account, and its password automatically changes every 30 days. Um, but the last logon timestamp is going to be the last time that computer pretty much was powered on. So we could take a look at this. And if we do, um, let's say, data properties like this. And then select, or actually, let's just do dot last logon timestamp and dot name. And of course, this is a number, so we have to pipe it over to string. And we can see a lot of machines just have negative one because they never been powered on. But like this machine, this is pretty old, right? If we look at this timestamp, this covid.search.htb, uh, the epoch time is 162. If we, let's see, epoch converter, if we look at this timestamp, this was May 24th to 2021, and it's April 30th, so almost, or well, probably a little over a year ago. Um, this timestamp, what is this? So let's go back to the Epoch Converter, timestamp to human. This is probably when I was recording the video, April 25th, 2022, five days ago, right? Oh, <laughs> it has the days ago. If I would have just uh, picked this, I wouldn't have to like guess, was this a year ago or not? Uh, Epoch tells me, right? A year ago. So um, I'm bringing this up because a lot of times when I do like Nessus scans, I want to make sure I hit every computer, right? And a lot of times computers would be powered off. Maybe they just went to sleep or something like that. Workstations often will do that. So I can compare a list of like the number of computers I've got in Nessus and then I can do something like, let's do this last log on timestamp. So let's do dot name and we'll do a select dot last log on timestamp is greater than, let's just epoch 30 days ago, right? Um, let's do, actually, we'll do like 60 days ago. So human date to timestamp. We grab this timestamp and then we'd put it here. And this will show me every computer that's been on in the last about 60 days. So we could get this list. And if this list is bigger than the list Nessus gave us or um, Nexpose if you use that or whatever tool you use to do your vulnerability scanning, you know it missed some because these machines were powered on within 60 days and it's not on your list. So that's where I use this data a lot as well. And all this type of stuff you can pull from the tools like Crack Map Exec, things like that. The reason why I like Bloodhound is because you run it, it grabs pretty much every data you could possibly want, puts it in files. So 
Um, you don't have to query the domain anymore. It gets good snapshots in time. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Take care, and I will see you all next time.